Let's count down the top 10 most viewed sailing blogs right now. At number 10, we have Chase's Story, who have an awesome vlog where they sailed across the Atlantic Ocean through the Panama Canal and to the South Pacific. They're currently in the Tuamotus on their cat, Cheeky Monkey. Check out their Turf to Surf blog too. Tasha and Ryan sail with two cats and a lot of crew. You can hear Chase the Story on episode 29 of the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. Sean and Julia sailing, sail the Great Lakes, and have been posting vlogs for five years. Their boat is currently up for sale. In Drake Paragon, Drake, Monique, and crew sail their 42-foot west sail on the East Coast and the Atlantic Basin. Wes and Kate from Wicked Salty sailed from Massachusetts to the Bahamas with their dog and are currently looking for a new boat. You can hear Wicked Salty on episode 13 of the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. Nikki's Untie the Line series on the White Spot Pirates channel has her sailing around Panama and the Western Caribbean. You can hear Nikki on episode 14 of the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast here on YouTube by clicking that link in the dot above. There's a big jump in views when you go from number six to number five. Gone with the Winds have over 19 million views, although many of those views came before they owned a sailboat. They're sailing their catamaran Curiosity in the Bahamas and headed south. SV Seeker is at number four. It's the only vlog that is DIY focused. SV Seeker is building a junk rigged steel boat. Take a moment to subscribe. Don't forget to click the bell icon so you can get notifications for when all our new videos are released. Sailing Vagabond is number one in terms of subscribers, but it's number three in terms of views. They sailed from the Med to New Zealand, but they're back in Europe with a new boat and Outremer 45. No word on what they're going to do with their old Beneteau. Rick Moore's at number two in his boat Sophisticated Lady, sailing the Eastern Caribbean. More than anyone else, probably Sailing SV Delos has popularized the sailing vlog genre and they are number one in terms of views. SV Delos has crossed the Pacific and Indian Oceans and is looking to cross the Atlantic this summer. You're sailing SV Delos by clicking the link above in episode 10 and 33 of the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. Sailing Podcast. We have selected episodes on YouTube, but we also have the full series for free on iTunes, Stitcher, and Google Play for Android. So total views is a lagging indicator of popularity. Channels that have been around longer are going to have more views just because people have had more time to watch them. I think there's no better measure of the joy that a channel has brought by its total views. All these channels have created videos that their fans keep on coming back for. Here is a preview of season two of Slow Boat Sailing coming in May 2017. All right, it's me and Sayana. First night, we're still trying to figure out what the watch schedules are. We're not going to talk about what happened in the marina. 
<laughs> we survived, the boat is still floating. Happy birthday, Sayana! Happy birthday! Thank you! <laughs> birthday! Right, they're ready for the bear. Yeah, they're huh? ready for battle. 13 knots! So fast! The biggest fish we've caught so far. Didn't have to put out a line. So we're about halfway to Hiva Oa today. Uh, it's about 1,750 miles. Uh, it's about halfway and we're less than that right now. We're about uh, 6 south and 110 west. And Hivo is uh, way over at uh, 138 west. You know, the we've been able to keep the downwind rig up, so keep the pole up since 8 uh, p.m. last night. We've kind of put it up and down for the last couple days or several days. Uh, so I don't know how permanent this is. The wind should uh, move more east, uh, move lower on the compass dial, and make it easier to, to run with the downwind wit rig. Uh, it seems that we have lost most of the current this far south, uh, and the reports are maybe we'll get as much as half a knot from here on out, but probably somewhere between zero and half a knot. Uh, so much of our speed boost will be lost. The other part that we might lose in the second half, well, I mean, one thing that we will have the benefit is, since we're downwind sailing, the waves are giving us that extra push, and definitely when we're surfing down these uh, five-foot waves, uh, we get a little, a uh, couple extra knots, and since that's a significant portion of the time that we're uh, sailing, that that adds up, uh, especially over the course of 14 days, which is what it probably looks like from here. I saw a whale hit our boat. Uh, and a big fin behind us, and then uh, yeah, it's pretty shocking for sure. What were you doing? Uh, well, I was honestly I was just writing down the time when I was checking for boats. <laughs> <laughs> So I'd just been looking out and just missed, I guess, missed the whale. <laughs> so I was writing it down and just felt a really large jolt. And then I guess we both kind of stood up to figure out what had just happened. So were you, you were at the helm? Yes. Uh, what time did you write down? I was like 5.54 or okay. something like that, I think. So right at the end of my watch. So. What, what did the fin look like? Well, honestly, I thought it was like, it just looked like a, a big gray fin, I don't know, <laughs> like a dorsal fin, um, pretty big, uh, maybe like three or four feet tall, but honestly, I was looking kind of ahead to see if there was anything else in front of us that we could hit, and I think uh, you saw the better, the better glimpse of the whale. Uh, was, uh, did anything come out of the whale? I mean, there's definitely like a lot of like brownish red color in the water um, surrounding it. So whether or not that was blood or not. Yeah, you thought it was red blood. Yeah, yeah. we'll never know. Uh -oh. Just went through uh, the fourth small uh, since we've been within uh, two days of our cases. Uh, these squalls have been kind of moderate, uh, so the gusts in the 20 knot range, uh, and really the boat going very fast, uh, faster than I thought she could go. And uh, we've had uh, the Jenniker up, which I'm sitting on right now, and the last squall, uh, I decided to take down the Jenniker uh, instead of just scandalizing it. 
down. Uh, I wanted to use the sock. The sock would not work. Uh, and the, the halyard would not come down. The halyard was in a cam cleat, and I had to take a hammer to the cam cleat to get it down. Uh, and that took several attempts, and I got a pretty bad or uh, a rope burn. Uh, on my finger trying to control its descent uh, and I just let it run. Uh, so retrieved it from the water pretty easily and I'm pretty happy to get it because I felt healing too much. Uh, at this point it doesn't make sense to, to have as much sail up. The winds are higher and we're in danger of getting to the Marquesas too early. So we are going to uh, slow it down today, our last full day at sea, the 26th day of the passage. Why don't you tell me uh, some of the things that you're looking for in a great sailing vlog, not just the vloggers that you like, what are some of these vloggers doing right and what are they doing wrong? Are there particular locations that you like? Do you like to watch vlogs with certain types of boats? I'd love to get your feedback on all those things. Put those down in the comments section below. We just got this slow boat sailing t-shirt in the mail. You could be wearing it while sailing the Marquesas if you pledge at patreon.com slash slowboatsailing.